morning YouTube, another day, another chauffeur driven journey. Caroline loves it when I do that. We are on a bit of a mission this morning, trying to catch the Flying Scots, but not literally trying to catch it, just actually trying to catch it with my iPhone. Basically, I'm trying to get to Haymarket Station, jump on a train there, go over the fourth bridge, jump off at North Queen's Ferry, turn my camera around, and try and catch the Flying Scotsman just as it comes off the fourth bridge, thereby catching two icons in one video. Cutting it a bit fine though, we've only got four minutes between trains. Let's do this. Welcome to Scotland Unplugged and the story of the most famous train in the world and a pretty famous bridge. The Flying Scotsman is the most famous steam locomotive in history, which makes it the most famous locomotive in history. Let's agree that anything isn't steam powered is a bit rubbish. 2023 marks 100 years since it went into service. That's mad. It was the first engine to do the coveted ton and crack 100 miles an hour. It's been to America and Australia. Now it's here in Edinburgh for a pretty short time and I'm not missing the chance to see it. I'm not a train spotter by the way, just it's the Flying Scotsman. The first thing to say is it's not Scottish. It was built in Doncaster but it was invented by a Scotsman because it's a steam engine. It was designed by Sir Nigel Gresley who actually sounds like he should be in an episode of Thomas the Tank Engine along with his most famous creation. That is a cool name. It's 70 feet long, 13 feet high and weighs roughly 97 tonnes. It actually has a tunnel going through the middle of its coal tender and a second water tender just so the crews can change over mid-journey without having to stop. It entered service on the Flying Scotsman London King's Cross to Edinburgh Waverley route in 1928. The name comes from that route. In a test run in 1934, it was clocked at 100 miles an hour. The first engine ever to do that. It was officially retired in 1963, after covering over 2 million miles, and it spent years in the hands of private owners, travelling the rails in and around San Francisco and at the bicentenary celebrations in Australia. It was eventually bought by the National Railway Museum in 2004 for a cool 2.3 million. It didn't start out famous. In fact, it was just any other A1 Pacific class engine. There were 10 of them ordered, but it became the London North Eastern Railway's flagship, representing the company at the British Empire Exhibition in 1924 and 1925. It has featured in a few films, including one in 1929 called The Flying Scotsman. It's also featured in a Top Gear race and it's its own character in Thomas the Tank Engine. Honestly, not a train spotter. That was awesome though. Not many bridges have their own expression. But this one does. I'm not sure if it's a peculiarly Scottish thing. Maybe you can tell me in the comments. But if something has to be done repeatedly, it's like painting the fourth bridge. Popular culture has it that it was done constantly. A full time job. Start at one end and once you finish, start again. But that's not quite true. Although they did have a full-time maintenance crew here, they actually just concentrated on the bits that were most weathered. Nowadays, it has a fancy coat that should last it another 25 years. Designed by Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker, it was built between 1882 and 1889. It's nearly two and a half kilometers long, 100 meters high, and sees 190 to 200 trains a day. It was the first major structure in the UK to be built from steel. About 55,000 tonnes of the stuff and 4,200 tonnes of rivets. Previous suggestions had included tunnels and a suspension bridge. This is 
a cantilevered structure. In fact, there is a tunnel underneath the fourth now, formed when two coal mines met up 500 metres below the seabed in 1964. Before the bridge, there was actually a roll-on, roll-off ferry that sailed between Granton, just outside Edinburgh, and Burnt Highland in Fife. The task of designing the bridge was firstly given to the North British railway engineer, Sir Thomas Bouch. Bouch had already designed the Tay Bridge and proposed a suspension bridge here, but on Sunday the 28th of December, 1879, the Tay Bridge collapsed in a storm, causing the Dundee-bound train to fall into the river and taking 59 lives with it that we know of. The resulting inquiry placed the blame squarely on Bouch's shoulders and he died a year later, his reputation in tatters. Back to the drawing board, Baker and Fowler demonstrated their cantilever principle in this photograph where they held the Japanese engineer Kaichi Watanabe in a chair between them. The bridge was costly. 78 men lost their lives during its construction and in the immediate aftermath, considerably more than the Tay Bridge disaster. Eight men were actually saved from drowning by rowing boats that were moored underneath the work areas. It is an iconic symbol of Scotland and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A big, mad, red, almost sculptural thing that's just unmistakable. And travelling over it is something else. But did I manage to get this and the Flying Scotsman together? Technically. I arrived and it was a bit busy. Really, you want to get the train going through the arch at the end, but the prime spots had all been taken by people with much bigger cameras than me. So I decided on the dramatic shot from the top of the footbridge. And then I caught up with it when it came back to Edinburgh that night. Job done. But then I happened to mention it to one of the kids. So, off we went back to Waverley the following morning. The thing about steam trains and big red bridges is that they're best enjoyed when you're under 10. It's cool but very loud. Couldn't have put it better myself.